So the official championship team of the season was recently released. I think we better talk about it. Guys, we're back to another video on the channel. This one was always going to get people talking, but the EFL over the weekend went ahead and released the official championship team of the season. I always question why they do it before the season's ended, but they want to get that award show in there. And I thought it was worth a video today to discuss it all. Now, at the end of the season, I'll be giving my final championship team of the season for who I think deserves to be in there. But some of the EFL's official picks are interesting to say the least. So as you can see on screen right there, this is the official team team that the EFL have gone with for the season. So we may as well go through each of the players, but they've gone for a 3-4-1-2 formation, which I guess makes sense given that the majority of championship teams now do play a three at the back, but it leads to some complications further up the pitch with some pretty big players being left out of this side, but they've gone for Lee Nichols, a back three of Tosin Adorabio, Lloyd Kelly and Joe Worrell. Um, into midfield, we've got Spence and Robinson as the wingbacks with Yates and Billing and Holding midfield. Harry Wilson in the number 10 role with Dom Solanke and Mitrovic as the front two and the manager of the season they gave to Nathan Jones. So we'll go through each of these positions one by one and we'll say which ones are maybe the debatable ones. Starting out in net with Lee Nichols and to be honest I don't have all too many complaints about this one. I think there were maybe around about five goalkeepers who I think could have put forward a worthy case of being in the championship team of the season. For me personally, the top five performing goalkeepers this season, I'd throw the likes of Nichols into that, Mark Travers at Bournemouth, Wes Fodringham for the impact he's had at Sheffield United in the second half of the season, Daniel Everson for the volume of saves he's made this season and the nature of some of those saves. And I'll also maybe throw someone like, a, I don't know, maybe a Bill Kowski in there for consistency over the season. But I can see why they have gone for Lee Nichols. Huddersfield's defensive record has immensely improved throughout the season so far. Nichols has faced the second most amount of shots on target so far this season, right behind Bradley Collins at Barnsley. Second best save percentage in the league at 77.7%. The only thing that goes against Nichols is I think that Huddersfield in general have been a really good defensive unit and the back line that's in front of him has done a really good job of sort of limiting high quality chances going up against Lee Nichols. So maybe he doesn't quite have the, you know, the save compilation at the end of the season that someone like a Daniel Everson or maybe even a Mark Travers might have but I don't really have all too many complaints about that Lee Nichols has been excellent but you can definitely put a case forward for some other goalkeepers so the first centre half they went with was Fulham's Tosin Adarabayo and I mean I don't have massive complaints about this one Fulham have been good defensively so far this season they've conceded just 38 goals um, this far into this season they've got the third best defensive record in the league right behind Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth the only thing that maybe goes against Adarabayo is I think for me personally, I might be inclined to go Tim Ream over Adorabeo for some of the big moments throughout the season that have defined Fulham at the back. I'd say that maybe Tim Ream's had a bit more of an influence on that Fulham back line than Adorabeo has for me personally this season. Listen, they're both, you know, they've both been brilliant and they both played a huge part in Fulham basically walking the league this season. But if it was between the two of them, I think for me, I'm going Tim Ream, based purely off this season. Lloyd Kelly has also managed to find his way into this team, and uh, to be honest, I'm not sure I agree with this pick, really. Listen, based off the first half of the season, then yeah, Kelly gets into this team. He was absolutely fantastic. But I think in the second half of the season, individually... He's seen a little bit of a drop-off in his performances, but, I mean, the EFL have probably done this in a way where they've seen, you know, Bournemouth have the best defensive record in the championships. So they've probably thought, well, we're going to have to throw a Bournemouth defender in there. But individually, I think for me personally, I'd have the likes of Cal Naismith at Luton, maybe even Levi Colwell at Huddersfield over Kelly based on this season. And then to complete the back three, we've got Joe Worrell, who, once again, similar to Adarabeo, I don't have massive complaints about being in here. He's, you know, had a fantastic season with Nottingham Forest and has been a massive part of their resurgence under Steve Cooper. But for me personally, based on this season in isolation... I think I go Scott McKenna over Worrell. McKenna's so underrated and he's been an ever-present member of that Forest side, whereas Worrell had a bit of a timeout um, with injury and stuff, didn't he? I don't know, I feel like that one's a bit of a coin start toss maybe between Worrell and McKenna, but McKenna's definitely a bit hard done by for not being in this team, especially when you've got three centre-halves in there. Right wing back, they went for Jed Spence. I don't have any complaints about this one. I don't think the age-old debate will be between, you know, Jed Spence, Isaiah Jones. I think that in the end they've given the nod to Spence 
because Forest have had a better season and I think I'd be aligned to agree with that really. There's not been much between them this season. The influence that both Spence and Jones have had on each of their sides has been absolutely massive. Jones has obviously had a slightly better season in terms of goal contributions, but Spence has been arguably the best player in a team that's only conceded 37 goals this season. So for that rationale, I think I agree with Spence getting the nod for this one. In off the left, they've gone for Fulham's Anthony Robinson and I'm a little bit conflicted about this one to be honest it does feel like in off the right hand side there's a bunch of options that we could have gone for but on the left we're a little bit more sort of scraping the barrel for our options here don't get me wrong Robinson has had his moments for Fulham throughout the season he's been part of the best defensive side and going forward um, certainly offers something you know particularly with that link up play down the left hand side with Cabano but consistently over the season I think there'd be a few others that I'd probably chuck in there. We've got the likes of Harry Toffolo to consider, Jordan Zamura at Bournemouth, who's been brilliant. I think that Keen Lewis Potter's an option as well, to be honest, considering that he's been playing as a, you know, a more of a left wing back in the second portion of the season. Even someone like Sorba Thomas, I think, could be considered for this position. I know he's played the majority of his football in off the right hand side, but his creative numbers have been freakishly good for Huddersfield so far this season, averaging over two key passes per 90 with 11 assists to show for. It as well so yeah a few plays for me personally would make it in over Robinson and that's not taking anything away from him as a player I'm sure I'll have no problems readapting to the Premier League but on isolation based off individual performances a few get in over him for me next we're then into central midfield another pick that I'm conflicted with they've gone for Philip Billing now don't get me wrong in the first half of the season particularly when Bournemouth were on that brilliant unbeaten run for the first few months of the season Billing was unbelievable you know he was arguably the best player in the championship during that time period but I do think that his individual performances have had an obvious drop off in the second half of the season to the point where I don't think I'd have him in my personal team and I think that the one obvious omission from this team has to be Reading's John Swift. Now I take the point that maybe Swift's numbers have somewhat dried up in the second half of the season but that can also be applied to Philip Billing. And John Swift has been a guy who's been playing in a god awful Reading side for the majority of the season and has put up some outrageous numbers 11 goals, 13 assists compared to Billing's 8 goals, 7 assists and I know it's not all based on that and you know on the eye and things like that but in a heartbeat, I think I'd have John Swift over Billing in my team. Ryan Yates also makes his way into this team. I don't hate this pick, to be honest. A um, bit more of an underappreciated player with the sort of role he has in this Forest side. Been another vital player for Steve Cooper in this resurgence that they've had as well. There were some other players, you know, worth mentioning for that holding role in the Championship team of the season. You know, the likes of Lewis O'Brien, who's been absolutely fantastic for Huddersfield. James Garner probably has a shout as well, but I think for me personally, I would probably edge Yates over Garner. Gustavo Hamer, another one that could be talked about. There are a few that could slot in there, but I don't mind the inclusion of Ryan Yates. I think he's been quite underrated. Now next up is where the championship team of the season sort of falls apart really, because they've only gone for one number 10, which is scandalous given the amazing performances we've had from creative players in the championship this season. They've gone for Harry Wilson, which has been a bit of a point of debate that I've seen on social media, but I mean, I personally don't have any complaints about this. Wilson has been unbelievable the partnership that he's you know um, had with Mitrovic this season 26 goal contributions with 10 goals and 16 assists his creative numbers have been absolutely off the charts and he has been this you know creative force within this Fulham setup this season but I think to properly configure a team of the season, you've got to drop one of the centre-halves and add in another number 10 into this sand, sort of rejig the formation a little bit because Harry Wilson's been fantastic, but there are some obvious notable omissions from this side who have to be considered. You know, we've got the likes of Chris Willock, Morgan Gibbs-White, Joel Perot, Brennan Johnson, Jamie Patterson, Naiskins Cabano, Jaden Anthony, Andy Vyman, all with worthy shouts of getting into this team, but they've configured it in a way where they've only put in one number 10, which I don't think is right given all the talent we've had in that position. I think for me personally, if I had to add one of those other names into, you know, another creative position into this team, I'd probably just edge towards Brennan Johnson, who did win the Championship Young 
Player of the Year, which I think was deserved. He's just been different gravy this season, hasn't he? 15 goals, 10 assists. I know there are some other people with better numbers and things, but overall performance, I think Brennan Johnson has to be in this team somewhere. Not at the expense of Wilson, but I think I'd take out a centre-half to get Brennan Johnson in there. And then wrapping it up with the two strikers, of course Mitrovic was going to make his way in there. 41 goals, 7 assists this season. This one was unquestionable, and rightly so, won the Championship Player of the Year award. It would have been scandalous had he not gone ahead and done so. Unbelievable season this time around, and can't wait to see what he's like in the Premier League next year, because I do think that under Marco Silva, with how this Fulham side has changed since Scott Parker, I think Mitrovic will be much better suited to having another proper crack at the Premier League that they didn't really get last time. And the other striker we had in there was Bournemouth, Dom Solanke, and I also think that this one was pretty deserved. 27 goals, 6 assists, you know, we have some other honourable names being mentioned in there, Ben Burton Diaz, Probably would have got in there had his numbers not fallen off in the second half of the season, you know, had he not got that injury when he did. Andy Vyman, I mean, he's played every position under the sun this season, hasn't he? He could have made it into any position, um, but 20 goals, 9 assists also worth considering. Elijah Adebayo for his season at Luton as well. We've had a bunch of prolific strikers, but I think it's only fair that Mitro and Don Solanke make it in as that forward too. And then the manager was named as Nathan Jones as well, which I think overall is quite fair. I think there are a number of honourable mentions who I'd certainly put forward a case for in terms of being the manager of the season and we probably can't come to a conclusive view until the season is finished but the names that will be up there would be you know Nathan Jones rightly so, Steve Cooper for the job he's done at Nottingham Forest this season, Carlos Corbram for the turnaround at Huddersfield this season. I think for me, those three are the obvious candidates, but there are, you know, some other names that you could maybe chuck in there, Marco Silva, amongst others. But for me personally, no complaints with Nathan Jones being manager of the season. But once again, we have the championship team of the season on there on screen now. Come the end of the season, when all is said and done, I will be giving my personal championship team of the season for who I personally would configure it up with. But I'd be interested to get your guys' reaction in the comments down below as to what was your initial reaction to the team and who do you I think it's been quite hard done by. Apart from that though guys, that will now wrap it up for today's video, so as always make sure to leave a like if you did go in to enjoy, and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. Thanks for watching though guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.